she said, I'm going to go to the hospital. I'm going to go to the hospital. I'm going to go to the hospital. Any announcements for the good of the fellowship? Gentle reminder, we're doing uh, cradles to crayons this quarter. On the uh, table out, out front is a list of uh, all the things that we're collecting. Boxes are filling up a little bit. Some little uh, person has gotten uh, looks like a bunch of pull-ups. Some wipes in there, so keep on bringing this stuff in. All right, no other announcements. Let's uh, stand together and sing uh, number 14 Joyful, Joyful, We Are Your <laughs> The joy of the Lord be with you all. And also, also with you. We have come here to sit at the feet of Christ and learn from him. I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. He has convened this assembly and by his spirit is amongst us. We will proclaim your name, O God, for it is good. By Christ's grace, we gladly worship the God whose glory will always stretch far beyond our comprehension yet whose love is as simple and available as the air we breathe. We will trust the steadfast love of God forever and ever. And let us pray together. God, our most holy friend, we come to you with gratitude and awe. You are a God whose glory fills heaven and earth. Praise belongs to you forever. Loving God, you are able to do new things when we least expect it. Whenever we become stuck in a rut, staying put and complaining, 
Please firmly call our names. Show us again the vision of Jesus going on ahead of us, beckoning us to follow and share in his own inclusive worship and service. It is named to your honor. Amen. Let us uh, continue our worship today as we present God his tithes and our morning offering. today is on page 856 of your pew Bibles. It's uh, Amos chapter 8 verses 1 to 12. The basket of fruit. This is what the Lord God showed me. A basket of summer fruit. He said, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then the Lord said to me, The end has come upon my people, Israel. I will never again pass them by. The songs of the temple shall become the wailings in, in that day, says the Lord God. The dead bodies shall be many, cast out in every place. Be silent. Hear this, you that trample on the needy, and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, <coughs> When will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain? and the Sabbath, so that we may offer wheat for sale. We will make the ephah small and the shekel great, and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord is sworn by the pride of Jacob. Surely I will never forget any of their deeds. Shall not the land tremble on this account, and everyone mourn who lives in it, and all of it rise like the Nile, and be tossed about and sink again like the Nile of Egypt? On that day, says the Lord God, I will make the sun go down at noon, and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your feasts into mourning, and all of your songs into lamentation. I will Bring sackcloth on all loins and boldness on every head. I will make it like the morning for an only sun, and the end of it like a bitter day. The time is surely coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread or a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. They shall wander from sea to sea 
and from north to east. They shall run to and fro, seeking the word of the Lord, but they shall not find it. Our second reading today is on page 200 of your pew Bibles. Colossians chapter 1, beginning at verse 15. The Supremacy of Christ. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have a place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you who were once estranged and hostile and hostile in mind, during evil deeds, he is now reconciled he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that, that you heard in which has been proclaimed to every creature every creature under heaven i paul became a servant of this gospel I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you, to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been <coughs> hidden throughout the ages and the generations, but has now been revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of, of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present the mature in Christ. And the gospel reading today is on page 72 of your pew Bibles. It's Luke chapter 10. Verse 38 to 42. Jesus visits Martha and Mary. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is a need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. This is the word of the God. Let's pray. First, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the day and the opportunity that we have to come and to worship you. And we pray, Father, that as we encounter you today, you would speak to us. We pray, Father, that through your scripture, we would hear your voice. We pray that through your scripture, we would see ourselves and we pray that as we see you as we see ourselves we can be moved to be more like jesus which in his name we pray Amen. all right so today Another story that's kind of very familiar to us, right? The story of Mary and Martha. 
So what's the story of Mary, Mary and Martha about? It's priorities. About, huh? Priorities. Priorities, okay. Tell me more about priorities. What do you mean by priorities? Mary was busy preparing for her event. Okay, so Martha was busy preparing for, for an event, for dinner. Jesus had come to dinner. She was busy preparing, okay? Mary wasn't up and she was listening to the Lord. All right, and so Mary instead chose, instead of doing work, to listen to the Lord. So a story about priority. What else? So it's just about priority. Okay, so she was whiny. You know, it's one of those things that, you know, when I when I hear this story um, and you think about whining, what goes through my head is, Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. <laughs> a, a lot of us grew up with the Brady Bunch, and it's that kind of, of, of thing, you know, we kind of hear about. You know, my mom did not want me to watch after. I didn't like it then. Okay. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not saying it was a good show. I'm not saying it was a bad show. I'm just saying that's what comes to mind for me because you had Jan, the middle, the middle lost sister, who was always kind of, you know, a little salty about what her, what her older sister was was doing, what she perceived to be a the focus of her parents and those kinds of things. Anyone else? Importance. Importance. What do you unpack importance a little bit? Well, the, the sister who's doing all the housework felt that that was, <coughs> that was important, but, but um, Jesus was saying to her, what I have to say is more important than the housework. Okay, so, so in some ways, uh, Jesus' message is more important than the work. Also, distraction. Distraction. So the word distractions came up a bit in there. Okay. And it reminds me, my mom was telling me yesterday that she um, she's in physical therapy for her hip now because she gets distracted a little. She's supposed to do these exercises and like every day of the week, but one week she skips a day, and then the next week she skips two days and gets distracted, and then by the time a couple weeks has gone by, she's not doing it at all. So the distractions can kick away at what's important. Okay, so a story about distractions <laughs> and how that can kind of move us kind of off task, move us off focus, okay? Just the way it is. The, the chores at the house will continue to be there all the time, but Jesus won't be in their house all the time. Okay. Take advantage of the opportunities when you have it. Right. Well, so let's let's kind of unpack this a little bit. Because you know, a lot of times that's what we think about is this idea that, okay, um, is this story saying that Martha should have just give up whatever she was doing, and become like Mary and sit at the feet of Jesus. Then who would cook? Huh? Then who would cook? All right. So, yeah. So, because uh, Carl brings up a good point. If, if Martha's going to give up the ghost there and sit at the feet <coughs> of Jesus, 
who is going to cook. So, you know, what is important in this story? What is important? So I want you to kind of think about, um, you know, you are a first century Jew. So what is important in this story? Okay, hospitality is important. So, faith versus works. Okay, faith versus works. But Martha wasn't doing anything more than what she saw as her job. Okay, so in some ways, Mary or Martha saw what she was doing as a job, and it was distilled to that. That's her role, rather than her job. It was a role. It was a job. All right, Jeanette, you talked about hospitality. What about hospitality? All right, so when someone enters your home, you're supposed to offer hospitality. And so if Martha had stopped doing what she was doing and kind of just sat at the feet of Jesus, what happens to the hospitality? Start. Huh? They starve. They starve. Well, it goes away. It goes away. Nothing gets done. So, as we think about this, then, what was Martha's frustration? What was Mar Martha's frustration? Like somebody said something. That Mary wasn't helping. I mean, that everybody, they think that the, the real, honest, underlying driver here was that Mary wasn't helping. All right, so, you know, I, I kind of think that, you know, in some ways, you know, there was some anxiety here. There's some anxiety in it. And what happens when we're anxious? What happens when we're anxious? Herman, what happens when we're anxious? <laughs> everything breaks down. Okay, so everything can break down, and, and we don't like to be anxious, do we? No, we don't like to be anxious. And so what do we do with our anxiety? We, can, we try to dump it. We try to dump it. So in some ways, you know, as I kind of feel uh, and read this story, it sounds like Martha is very anxious. And it's in her anxiety that she's dealing with that, you know, she tries to sort of even tri triangulate kind of Jesus and pull Jesus into this, this anxiety that she's having. And Jesus, what's he do? He says, you know, you're not going to try and deal with me. All right? You know, you've got to look at this for yourself. Okay? And here's the words that echo to me that um, are the words that, you know, I told you. The way I kind of operate is, you know, usually what happens is I hear these words that kind of echo throughout the week. Mary has chosen the better part. So... Mary has chosen the better part. So what is the better part? What is the better part? Because I think that her anxiety comes because she doesn't have the better part. And so kind of what is that better part? So think about that for a second. Let that kind of simmer in. Now, we also have to remember that as we think about this story, okay, it has connection. What is it connected to? Whatever came before. Whatever, Whatever came before, because it says, you know, it says, you know, um, now they went on their way and he entered a certain village. And so we have that teaching of Jesus, and then, you know, you're going to take that. And he's entering a village, and what's going to happen? He tells a story, and then hopefully he's going to see that story in some ways 
in flesh. And so the story before it was the Good Samaritan. And so, you know, as we thought, think about the Good Samaritan, we think about what we talked about last week, what was the big, hairy idea here underlying the Good Samaritan. All right, the Jews were stuck in their roles. Okay, and the law, institutional religion, you know, whatever you want to call it. Okay, what else? The unknown, whether the, the guy that needed help was clean or unclean. Okay, you know, some of the unknown, uh, maybe some of the messiness of life that I was going to have to get entwined in. People were so focused on where they were going and what they were meant to do, they thought that they couldn't take care of the need that was right before their eyes. All right, good. So there's they're, they're, they're so hyper-focused on other things that they don't see the needs around them. Anything else? As, as I thought about it last week, you know, for me, it's a story about humanity. The story about us. The story about you know how sometimes we miss the mark. That you know there was three things that I told you that we needed to do. What were the three things? Step up, listen up, and show up. And okay, good. That well, that's that Debbie's work. way. That's <laughs> Debbie's interpretation. That wasn't exactly what I had, I said, but yeah, it's it's so so you need to first listen. Okay, well, you need to come close. Yeah. You need to come close. And then you need to Listen. See, see. see and see kind of with the eyes of Jesus. And then, and then act. act. Okay, so we need to come close. We need to see and we need to act. I like what you said better. Though. I just mean? wrote, I step up, listen up, and show up. Or, there you go. And I so, wrote that down when you were talking. All right, good. So she says it better show than me. I, I said it Not shut up. Show, show up. up. <laughs> Not shut up. So show up. Listen up. Listen up. Step up. And step up. Yeah, that's the better order. All right, good. All right, so great. So, so we, you know, that was the kind of thing. And so, you know, if you think about it, okay, we, we've been on a little bit of a mission here. So, you know, uh, we want to do what Debbie said. Um, what is that again? Show up. Show up. Listen up. Listen up. Step up. Step up. All right. But even before that, what, what was the story the week before that? Oh, by the way, did you home your, do your homework? Yes. yes. Okay. Good. You did your homework. All right. So that should give you a little hint of what we were talking about. Just do it. Okay, so in some ways the, the underlying thing was just do it, a little Nike commercial. But what was what was the story about? What was the story about? Begins with an N and ends with Amen. Name it. Okay, it was a story of name and name and healing. And so, you know, what was the big hairy idea that I kind of pulled out from that story? Who was who was the real hero of the story? Okay, this unnamed servant who did something very small. So the hairy idea was here that even us, as we think about ourselves, maybe as insignificant, okay, and Maybe sometimes we think that the things that we do are insignificant, are significant in the eyes of God. And so we have insignificant people doing in, uh, insignificant things which were important. This week we have, okay, we need to, um, what did Debbie say? Show, Show up. Show up. Listen, Listen up. up. Step, Step up. up. All right, so, and then. You know, all of that brings us up to this week. And so, you know, it's 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 all about the doing. Okay, but you know, I think this week there's a there's a little bit of conversation around the attitude of doing. 
that, you know, as, as I think about, you know, when Jesus says, you know, so she has chosen the better part. I think it's not so much in what was done, but it was in the attitude in which it was done. It was in the attitude in which it was done. Because as, 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 as uh, Carl said, you know, one was obliged to offer hospitality, okay? So it would have been rude to um, have Jesus come in the house and not offer him any food. You know, that, 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 that was against, you know, how they live. That's against, you know, think about, you know, you in, invite somebody for a dinner party. Um, the dinner party's not done, but you're just going to go in and sit down and chit-chat. What happens? Nobody eats. There's not, you know, that, that hospitality has not been extended. And so the, the other side of that coin, though, is somebody had to be with Jesus. Okay, yeah, somebody had to be with, with Jesus. Okay, we get that. But, you know, could uh, could Martha have been with Jesus? Huh? <laughs> I, I heard the word crock pot there. <laughs> All right, so if she would have been doing crock pot cooking, she could have put it in the crock pot, let it cook, and, and you know, can kind of... Let things go, and while it's doing its thing, she, she, she could go and be with Jesus. And, and you know, while, while we laugh at that, but you know, that we're not far off the mark in the sense that can you cook and can you be part of? Yes, you can. And so, you know, as, as, as I think about what, what she was doing and, and, and the way she was acting, that the anxiety wasn't so much about hey, I need to cook. The anxiety was about the presence of Jesus. That in this story, the better part, the better way is practicing the presence of Jesus. And sometimes it's about practicing the presence of Jesus in the insignificant things that we do. I have a friend. His name is Brother Lawrence. Anybody know Brother Lawrence? Yes. Okay, I have one person that knows Brother Lawrence. Jeanette, you're shaking your head a little yeah. bit there. He's the person that washes dishes. He's the, okay, he's the person that washes dishes. So Brother Lawrence is, is a monk. Okay, he was a monk. And, um, you know, he was a monk and he wrote a book, a little teeny tiny book. It's called Practicing the Presence of God. So, so you, you guys know my friend, Brother Lawrence, a little bit. So you said he's got something to do with dishes. That would be, are you shaking your head? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I listened to it on Audible last year, the year before. All right, so listen to the book. Remember. It made that much of an impression on you that you you can't remember. No. <laughs> okay, so you know here, you know, in, in a monastery, you know, there's lots of different things, lots of different things to be done, and you know, different kind of rankings for kind of chores and stuff as as kind of you know uh, levels of importance. So where do you think dish cleaning comes in? Okay, it's at the bottom. It's at the bottom. And no, they didn't have dishwashers. No crock pots, no dishwashers. Okay? And so, you know, and, and, and when, when you talk about the monastery, when you talk about the monastery, you know, are we talking about, like, uh, a, a couple of dinner dishes here? What are we talking about? Lots of people, lots of big pots and pans. It's kind of like, you know, uh, anybody ever going to camp? Yeah, ever going to camp? Oh, yes. Okay, but you can't, have you ever had dish duty? Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. You had this duty. Carl, you put your hand up about this duty. What did you learn about this duty? I was thinking while I was in the Navy, I worked. Okay, so, okay. Different kind of camp. Different kind of camp. It's called Navy camp. Okay? So, in Navy camp, what the, you know, what did you do? I worked in a store, which is where they, where they dropped off their trees and left over and everything else. All right, so there was a lot of stuff, wasn't it? It takes a lot of time. And, and you, you know, the folks that dropped off their stuff, were they nice and scrape everything yeah. off and wipe it down? Sort of like we do before we put things in a dishwasher, we clean the dishes, we put them in a dishwasher? No. It was, it was all kinds of slop and crap all over the place, and, and you had to take care of it, right? And so, first of all, was it, was it a fun job? <laughs> okay, it was quiet, but that was not my question. Was it a fun job? Not that much. Was it that good? When I went to the dishwasher, I went my mom's house. That's the one job I did not like. Okay, you did. And they're already clean, right? They're already clean, but like sometimes, you know, when he does it like several times a day, it's like, I just can't do this an hour. <laughs> <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay, and yeah, okay, so that's one of the things. So sometimes, you know, it's it's not only do you have to do the dishes, but you have to maybe do them some other way when you like to do them your way. So my point is, you know, if you think about this, you know, and you think about, you know, Brother Lawrence. You know, Brother Lawrence, you know, could have been a little bit sour. You know, he could have been, you know, a little bit cranky. You know, because here, you know, he's stuck in the kitchen, you know, taking care of everybody else's messes and cleaning up while they're off doing, you know, maybe they're out there doing the gardening outside. Or maybe, you know, they're doing, you know, writing and academic you know so the perception here is that you know this is you know low level stuff um you know it's stuff that you know is it's looked at as insignificant but you know the monk writes a book about washing dishes what did he learn about washing dishes. Huh? Okay, no drop. It's an important job because people that's going to eat later depend on them to eat being clean. Okay, it, it has a bit of importance to it because you know they gotta they gotta cook and they gotta eat, so they need clean uh, clean pots and pans and dishes and things like that. Jeanette, do me a favor. Speak in your playground voice. I can't hear you. Yeah, right. realized it was a job for glory to God also. Okay, so he saw that in his work that he could bring glory to God. That in some ways, as he did the dishes, he was able to practice bringing Jesus into it. He was able to bring Jesus into it. And I think, you know, as we look at the story today, and we look at Martha, we look at Mary, it's not so much about, okay, you know, one was doing nothing and one was doing everything. It was, you know, one was practicing the presence of Jesus and the other was not. And Jesus says, Mary has done the better thing. Not so much that she gave up her work to sit at his feet, but that she had practiced the presence of Jesus. Now, you know, why does this become important? 
you know, okay, so, you know, all right, you know, she's doing, she's making dinner, um, and, and she needs to practice the presence of Jesus. You know, the Samaritan on the road needs to practice the presence of Jesus. The, the, the slave girl who um, points name and to the prophet, which uh, introduces him to the, the God Yahweh, you know, needs to practice the presence of God. So do you think maybe, do you just think maybe all of these people need to practice the presence of God? In some ways, we need to do that as well. Shake your heads, yes. Shake your heads, yes, because it becomes very important. Because what do you think would have happened if Mary, no, I'm sorry, Martha, was practicing the presence of God, what her, would her attitude have been? She, like wouldn't, have, she wouldn't have been bitter. She would have been bitter? Yeah, she would have done her work with joy and not dragged Mary. About she would have worked, done her work with joy and not, uh, you know, uh, triangulated uh, Mary into it. Yeah, so it's important to practice the presence of God. It's important, right, for us to do something. Now, think about, you know, for those of you that did your homework, I don't want to know what your homework was. I don't care about that. But as you did your homework, okay, as you think about, all right, God says that I need to do something. God says, I need to do something, and so I'm going to do it. What's the danger that we have there? Okay, putting the point up, putting the importance on ourselves. That in some way, it becomes just another task, just another checkbox on the to-do list. So. Right now we're doing, what's that called? Cradles to crowns. Cradles to crowns. Cradles to crowns. I was going to go crowns to cradles. You know. Um, all right, so we're doing this thing, right? And so we have this this list, okay? And so, you know, I'm hoping that everybody is going to participate. And, and here's a little thing. If you go to uh, Walgreens and you use their brand, you can get a whole big, huge thing of baby wipes for $1.99. So I, I, I got some of those the other day when I was there. I was getting candy for myself. <laughs> <laughs> it was also sugar free. All right. I, I, I use, I eat Werther's. Those Werther's. Oh, um, yeah, if you're looking for a gift for me for Christmas or something, <laughs> Werther's has these bags. They're sugar free. They got uh, plain caramel, uh, coffee, and chocolate all in a bag mixed together. Personal favor, if you really want to embrace yourself to me, you can go on Amazon and just get the chocolate ones because I like them the best. <laughs> they don't sell just the chocolate. But I was going, going there and I figured out <laughs> while I'm there, you know, I know I need to get some stuff for it for uh, cradles to crown. So let me let me zip around. And, and, and that's the first thing I came to. So in some ways, you know, for me, it was, you know, okay, I needed to do this check mark done, right? So in some ways, you know, as I got those, as I kind of put them in the, the, the box today, you know, I felt good about myself. Why did I feel good about myself? No? I checked the box. I have a, I have a, you know, the way I operate is, is I'm, I'm, I'm kind of busy. And so a lot of moving parts in all different places. So I have a, 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 a to-do list. And so I got to check it off my box. Is that the right attitude to have? And so if you're thinking about that, what would be a much better way for me to still participate, but participate and kind of intertwine. Every time you 
practicing the presence of God. Yeah, every time you go, it's on your mind or wherever you are. You're like, ooh, a sale on socks. Okay, so in some ways, uh, kind of, instead of looking at it as just a to-do list, one other thing to do, kind of um, think about it in a different way in the sense that it's, it's, it's always there, okay? So how can you do that? So, Donna Clark, same at the church, had, uh, it, it, but, you know, when, as you think about that, it was more than just, okay, I'm going to go into the market, let me get one more and bring it here. It was the importance of building that pantry and the okay. people Exactly. So, in some ways, there was, I'm going to say, a face behind that can wasn't just okay uh, somebody gets a canned good from St. Mark's or something like this that there was a face behind that so in some ways it's kind of I, I think instead of just raising the importance just it's in my head all the time it's okay it's in my head all the time because because it's not just baby wipes it's not just canned goods it's not just pull-ups it's I'm seeing, I'm seeing. It's kind of like this, you know. You ever watch TV? Okay, good. Thank you, Will. Okay, because I. So you, you ever watch? You watch TV, um, and depending on where you, what where you watch, what channel you watch, um, you know, sometimes you get those uh, SPCA. Rescue commercials. What's the matter with them? Oh, they're pathetic. Why are they pathetic? Okay, because they want you to get more money. Some of them are scams too. Okay, okay. I get. I. 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 They. They can be scams, but I'm not endorsing them. I'm just asking. Have you seen them? Okay, so in some ways it can kind of make you make it can make you anxious and angry because okay, instead of filming this, maybe you're doing something. But okay, look, that's all good stuff. I, that's all good stuff. But I think about think about this. In some ways, does that visual? Does that the, the 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 music behind it in some way move you, or 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 you know kind of in some ways capture you and capture maybe your heartstrings to want to give? It plays on your guilt. Okay, it plays on your guilt. It's a connection. Yeah, it, it, it's a connection, and that's where I'm going with this. Is that in some ways as we think about these, these things that these presumably, you know, insignificant things that we do, you know, they, they can be insignificant unless we couple it with the presence of Jesus. And so in some ways, what I'm saying is as I'm picking up, you know, those baby wipes, hopefully in my head, you know, I'm seeing with the eyes of Jesus and not just saying, okay, here, I'm, I'm, I'm checking something off a box. But that, you know, in some ways I can see, you know, maybe some child who is in need that's going to be helped by this. And so in some ways, okay, we can see with the eyes of Jesus and see the importance it is. And that it's not merely just, hey. I'm finding a, a, a thing of baby wipes for a buck ninety-nine, but that in some ways I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to impact a child. All right, so that's that's one thing we can do. What you know? What else? All right. 
great idea. So in some ways, you know, sometimes we poo-poo the power of prayer. That in some ways, you know, not only do we need to, you know, think about, you know, this, okay, if I put my, my, my Jesus vision on this and I can see in some ways, yeah, then, then I can also be moved to prayer. You know, Father, you know, when you talk about Brother Lawrence, what was he doing that we, that he practiced the presence of God? Praying while he washes his shoes. He's praying. He's praying while he's, but what, what kind of prayers is he, uh, oh, God, you know, I'm praying for, uh, um, uh, you know, Ukraine and this, that. What was, what was, he was praying for specific people and specific things. It wasn't just, you know, sort of these, you know, kind of, you know, big, huge prayers that, you know, now are they important? Sure. Do we pray for world peace? Do we pray uh, that evil will, will leave the world? Yeah, we pray all that stuff. But in some ways, he was able to kind of practice the presence of God by, you know, praying specifically for people okay you know so he had monks that were going to eat from the from the uh, uh pots and pans that he did and so he would pray those specific prayers for them okay so in some ways we see with the eyes of jesus you know it doesn't become just merely something we do but part of who we are okay in some ways we can link that with the presence of god by adding prayer to it. I think that's great. As you pick things up, you, you say a prayer, you think about it. And yeah, I mean, in some ways, we as a congregation need to not only take ownership of, of providing things, but we should probably pray over that as well. And that's my bad. Okay, that one's all good. All right, what else can we do? How else can we, we practice the presence of Jesus? Volunteer. Okay, volunteer. Right, unpack that one a little bit. Well, it's like when we had the folks staying here, I think it was April was our month. Yeah, we haven't and done that in a couple of years. Because people people would, would volunteer and, and make the sandwiches and the meals. Okay. Uh, you know, people who volunteer to go to food banks for the homeless. Okay. Yeah. So in some ways, you know, it's 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 about you know volunteering, and I think that's part of you know in the sense of you know engaging people, you know, getting into it. I mean, you know, as you think about, you know, if we think about last week. Know, it was okay instead of you know not being part of it that we're being part of it um, remember what did I finish up with last week just do it okay what quote Martin Luther King nope oh. that was the first one <laughs> well uh, Mr. Rogers Mr. Rogers Mr. Rogers and what did what did Mr. Rogers have to say? No. What did Mr. Jimmy? Do you remember what Mr. Rogers said? Because Jimmy, you see, you write everything down. That's why I put you on the spot. He said, "You always make each day a special day. You know how by just your being you. There's only one person in the whole world like you, and people can like you exactly as you are." Mr. Rogers did say that, but that was not the correct. <laughs> it was something when it, when you read it, it reminded me of the Jimmy Stewart movie Harvey, which is something like you can choose to. My mother told me you can choose to be smart or you can choose to be pleasant. I chose pleasant, and it was it was ringing with that. Yeah. So so the whole idea I, um, behind the, the quote is that you know, not my child. Not my world, not my problem. We can choose to live that way, or we can choose to live a way that it is my child, it is my world, it is my problem. 
in so some ways as if we're going to practice the presence of Jesus. The world is my problem. Yeah. Whatever's happening that we need to um, get stuff for cradles to crayons. Um, you know, that is my problem. It is my problem. And that in some ways, you know, we're going to practice the presence of Jesus. We need to get our hands dirty in a number of ways. Let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you again for the day. Father, we thank you for the privilege that we have to be your sons and daughters. And Father, we thank you that you give us the privilege to be in your church. And we pray, Father, this week as we continue to live out your mystery, your, your ministry in the world, that you would help us to continue to see with your eyes. That we, we would be empowered by your spirit to draw close to the world and to do something. Not merely just to do something, Father, but to do it in your name and in your presence. Help us, Father, to do the better thing. Father, I pray for our church. I pray for our Bishop John. I pray for our District Superintendent Evelyn. I pray for all of our churches that Together we can be the hands and feet of Jesus in the world. And Father, I lift up our, our world to you today. I pray, Father, that light can break through the darkness, that love and peace can stamp out the hatred and evil in the world pray for our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. We pray for peace. Father, we pray for all of those who have been enduring gun violence. We pray again for your peace. And we pray today, Father, for anyone everyone who is lost that they would find you we thank you we praise you for all of us we pray in the matchless name of our lord our savior jesus who taught us to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. God is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's stand together and sing our closing in joy of the Lord. My guitar. My head. Thank you. 
Thank you. 